Good afternoon everyone, I'm back again, Lucha FM, with another episode of the Second City Wrestling Local to Global Challenge on TW9, where you left us off last, we did a few more shows, and um, we integrated the Chicago legend that is um, Colt Cabana, and we also recently added another uh, Chicago superstar, or Detroit, I think he's from Detroit, um, but we've got rhino in from the great lakes himself so he's a bit on the old side so he'll he'll wrestle a bit here and there but i mean to have rhino and colt commander on this roster already is just insane i wasn't expecting this at all um but yeah just amazing but um we did a couple of shows as well let's just go through the show history before we crack on with anything else um let's i think it's this way isn't it down here so yeah so I think this was I think was this was the show that we did we started the episode last last week so we had a best um bit was a comedy skit with Colt Cabana a best match was Mad Dog Conley defeating Malcolm Monroe in a dog collar match because obviously Mal uh I come across Mad Dog Conley's attributes and he had a chain match specialist attribute so we thought we put that to the test and then we did um we did a we did literally all titles on this one because we had no we had the titles but we had no champions so I crowned all new champions so we had um, Nevia defeating Tootie Lin to win the women's title that was by the looks of it the best oh no the second best match of the night um, and then we had the Killers which was which is Mad Dog Conley and Lord Crow um, defeating the Golden Gods which is Golden Dragon and Gringo Loco to win the tag titles, so they're the new tag champions. And then we had Frontman Ja surprise everybody by defeating Colt Cabana to win the title, the heavyweight title. So he's our heavyweight champion and um, he celebrates to end the show. And then the last show of last week's episode, um, we just tried a few people out like Flip Kendrick. He had a good match with Nick, Dins Nick's Nick Dinsmore. Can't get words out today, sorry. Um, Gringo Loco defeating Lee Johnson was the best match of the night, 51, which is really good for us. And then the main event, we had Colt Cabana, who just who the previous show lost the in the title match. We had him defeat Joseph Bishop. So I think the next show we're going to have frontman Ja defend his heavyweight title. And I think maybe we might have the week after that, uh, the next show after that, we'll probably have the women's title. Or I might just, every show, I might just have the titles defended every show. So, we'll see. But yeah, anyway, we've got some inbox items. So, let's have a look at these. So, a lot of the wrestlers that I asked to change their body type have, which is good to see. So, that'll help them get over more. Um, Joe Doran leaves TNA. Is Joe Doran from Chicago area, Great Lakes? He is. Uh, oh, he's, he's currently unavailable. Due to personal issues, personal issues. And then obviously we've had a few more wrestlers. Body type, which is great. And then we've got Itius Kogo returning as well. So, very good indeed. Right, let's get cracking with the first show of the episode. Um, we'll just, I want to be really careful when I click on here. Because last week we had nothing but issues with my mouse pad. So we're going to keep that one as usual. We've had no pre-show incidents, which is great. Let's have a look at the booking room meeting. So after all bonus penalty replied, the meeting generated a level of a total of 55 CE. I need to bring in somebody else into the creative team. I need to find somebody after this this show. Uh, but we'll leave it for now. Right, locker room incidents. Freddie Ye has turned up and asked if we might be able to Use him tonight. He's an unemployed worker who happens to live nearby. Does he actually live in Great Lakes? He does. I used to rate um, Fred Ye. So well, and he has got professional personality. Um, he is in a deep friendship with Tootie Lin as well. So yeah, let's talk details. Right, ninety for the show. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. So we'll have we'll bring him in for this show. Um, Isaiah Broner brightened the backstage area simply by being so cheerful and fun to be around. He seems like a really good person to have around, he does Isaiah Broner. 
Same with Tutti Lin as well. So she won a video game tournament. Um, Gabari training, Gringo training. So that's all right. We didn't have any bad things happen there. We can inspire the wrestlers as well. Right, so I'll be back in a sec with the first show. Right, we're back with the first show of the episode. So what I decided to do was put um, Fred Ye in a tag team with Isaiah and Brona. Uh, Brona sorry, <laughs> that was unfortunate. Um, and they lost to the tag champions, the Killers. Um, Mad Dog Conley submitted Isaiah Brona. And um, they make successful defense number one of the tag titles. The second got a 42. Wrestling was 39. Um, Mad Dog Conley was the best wrestler in the ring. Um, Fred Ye, very disappointing, only a 24 rating. He was the weak link in this match, which is a bit weird. And unfortunately, um, Isaiah Broner and Fred Ye have zero chemistry as partners. Um, Fred Ye was a bit rusty as well, so maybe he'd have been slightly better if he wasn't so rusty. And the next match, we did a women's tag team match, and it was Heather Reckless and Ray Lynn. They defeated the women's champion, Navia and Elise Crowley. Um, Ray Lynn pinned uh, Nav Navia. Um, the segment got a 40, 23 for the crowd, 39 for the wrestling, and uh, Navia, sorry, Navia? I'm calling her Navia, aren't I? Navia um, got a 45 range. She was the better one out of the four. We do need to get better road agents at some point as well. Maybe I can get Rhino in as a road agent. He might be slightly better. And then post-match attack by Heather Reckless on the on, uh, Nev uh, Nevia. And then we did a singles match between Gringo Loco and Fred. Um, Fred? Flip Kendrick. Um, Gringo Loco defeated Flip Kendrick in 15 minutes by pinfall with the frog smash. Um, what we did is we designed the match to steal the show. Seven got 54, 29 for the crowd, 49 for the wrestling. Um, Gringo Loco was the better worker out of the two with a 57 rating. Cliff Compton could have done better. Um, Gringo Loco benefit from having a hot new move. And then we just did a post-match beatdown afterwards to give a little heat back for Flip Kendrick. We've only got a 28 for that segment. And then we did a six-minute um, promo um, with Frontman Ja. Just bigging himself up. Got a 78 rating. He's amazing on the mic. Absolutely amazing on the mic. 78. That's the highest segment we've ever had. Um, and then in the main event, Frontman Jar defeated Ace Perry in 10 minutes by submission. Um, hold on. That's confusing. Wins the heavyweight championship. The last show I put, Did I forget to put the... Hmm. Okay. So we've got a new heavyweight champion. Um... Yeah, frontman Ja wins the SCW Heavyweight Championship. I could have sworn I put the title on the line in, the, in that match with Colt Cabana. Maybe I didn't. I apologise if I didn't, everyone. Um, usually I'm pretty good at remembering to do that. Seven got a 45, 26 for the crowd, 41 for the wrestling. Frontman Ja was slightly better. Both wrestlers were really off their game. But yeah, overall... We had a um, show increase our popularity on region. 47 overall rating, which I think is the best one we've ever done. So what we need to do is we need to have every show, we need to have Frontman Ja put in a promo. Um, and it got 151 people in, which is amazing. Right, let's address. So we go Frontman Ja, good performance. And then I think we'll have, um, who was the other one? Gringo Loco. We'll just do that. Yep, yep. Right, here we go. Financial report. So we made $755 from ticket sales, which is really good. 157 from merchandise. Workers cost us $1,200. Show cost was $296. 75 for marketing. Overall loss was $659, which ain't too bad. Not too bad. We've increased our popularity again. Every show, I swear to God, we're increasing it. Um, we will not be... We're not far off from um, increasing our popularity at the tiny size. Increasing their size, sorry. But yeah, that's really good. Absolutely amazing. So we'll have a quick look. We'll see if there's anything worth looking at on the inbox items. And then what I'll do is I'll forward it to the next show. But I'm going to also look at bringing in creative. Actually, I'm going to do that uh, while you lot watch me 
I think you might be interested in seeing who I bring. There we go. So we've increased our size to tiny now. So does that mean we can actually look at getting a a deal? Let's have a look. Reset. No, we still can't get a deal yet. Oh no, I don't want to exit. Um. Okay, so we can't get a deal yet. So right, let's have a look at which one is it now? It's here somewhere. Size, there we go. So we look at size, we'll just bring it up a bit here. Um, starting out, so when we started out, we we're insignificant. This is the smallest size possible and achieved simply by being active. Laying the foundation, achieve 17 popularity in your home region of the Great Lakes, which we've succeeded in. So the next size is building the fan base, achieve 35 popularity in your home region of the Great Lakes. So I think that's going to take a bit of time, that's a bit of a leap, but I think we'll get there gradually. Um, let's have a look at size criteria. So building the fan base, achieving 35 popularity in home region of Great Lakes. Okay, let's have a look at tracking progress. So we're doing well. We are gradually every month, like every month we've been increasing it. So I think if we're going to be, I reckon by June 26, so in about J July 26 maybe, uh, 2026, we'll be at a small size. We might increase our popularity at a quicker pace than that. But if we're basing it on the progress that we're making at the moment, like one point in popularity each time we do an event, I think as well, if we have Frontman Jar, um, putting a promo it will increase the overall show rating so we definitely need to do that is he in a storyline from manja i feel like we need to put him in a storyline um I, I forgot to do anything with the lee johnson jimmy young storyline as well so we'll put front manja um and who should we have him against rhino would probably be a good one wouldn't he so we'll have front manja versus rhino that would be a good little storyline. We can have like frontman Jar basically just running his mouth, talking shit about Rhino, and then Rhino can just like attack him. He can be like the Rhino from ECW, just crazy, just killing people. That's what we need to do with him. So let's have a look at the... Let me have a look at the show history again, because I could have sworn, like I said, I could have sworn. Did I put the title on the line? By the looks of it, it doesn't say on here whether I did or didn't. It doesn't really give me much indication. Okay. Well, I apologise for people who watched the last show and thought that I actually did put the title on him. I meant to. Um, it just didn't work out. Right. We need to find somebody who we can add to the creative team from the Great Lakes area. So if we reset this, and then what we do is do Great Lakes. Oh, Great Lakes. And then is there a creative thing on here where we can... Creativity, creativity. No. How do you search booking skills? That might be it. Right, should we go 80? Try and go as high as 80. Nobody, okay. 70 maybe. So we've got Alison Danger, who wants 240 pounds a show, and Dave Fraser, who wants 400 a show. Should we go with Alison Danger? We are making a little bit of money, so we can afford it. And she also can double up as a as a wrestler as well which is great because she used to be a really good wrestler and a manager back in the day i used to really i used to have a massive crush on alison danger back in the day when she was in ring of honor um and her brother steve carino is a really nice bloke i spoke to him at a wrestling show like many years ago and he very kindly spoke to me for about half an hour about wrestling and stuff like that so you know i've got much respect for that family um, so that's Alison Danger. Do we, do we try and bring somebody else in as well? We can up to, I think you can have up to four. So let's see if we can bring anybody else in. Right, let's try 65. No. Let's try 60. Right. Michael Blanton. Mm -hmm. He only wants £30 a show. So that's good. That's cheap. That's what we like to see. Cheap. People. Right, so now we need to look at getting road agents in. So I think road agents, from what I remember, it's psychology needs to be about 70. I don't think we're going to get 80 and everything. So if we go 70, 70, and I think reputation as well, 70. Right, let's try that. Let's see who we can bring in. So we've also got a steel. Alex Shelley would be amazing. Let's add him to the shortlist. Obviously, we can't get him in at the moment. Oh, he's already on the shortlist. It's fine. 
Uh, Becky Lynch, is she from the Great Elite Series? Okay. Well, she's already on the show list. Okay. CM Punk obviously would be the dream one, but then again, even if he left WWE, we'd struggle to afford his. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to afford him at the moment. So he's unwilling and unable to negotiate anyway. We've got Paul Cabana who could be uh, a road. I talked to the worker, see if he'll be a road agent. Right, where is he? Oh, he already is a road agent. Okay. Um, is he already a road agent for us? Fair enough. Right. So there's Paul Cabana. Maybe Dan Severin would probably be a good one. He wants 200 a week. I think we're just going to have to bite the bullet here and I think we're going to have to accept we're going to have to pay more now. So we can also have Dan Seven double up as a wrestler as well, though that's good. Uh, Joe Dorin, can we already try and bring it? He doesn't want it yet. Um, until Friday the 1st of October. So what is it now, June? Okay, so we, oh God, 2027, bloody hell. Right, Rhino, Rhino can actually be a road agent. Let's see if we've got him on the shortlist. No, we haven't. So we've added, he would be another dream sign. He's from the Great Lakes area. While we're at it, should we have a look at wrestlers from the Great Lakes area? So we go Great Lakes, and then what we'll do is um, to hire. Should we go with, what we'll do is we'll go gender first, we'll go male. I feel like the women's division isn't that bad at the moment. Oh, we want active wrestlers, don't we? Any role, wrestler. Right, okay. So let's see if anybody stands out here. Blake Christian, he'd be a good one. He wants six hundred pounds a month over, uh, a sh yeah, per show. So that's not happening anytime soon. Braden Lee, Braden Lee looks like a good. Is he a good wrestler though? Skills. So he's got. He's quite flashy, but and he's okay. I don't think he's good enough though. Um, I'll add him to the shortlist because you never know. Right, shortlist. I might bring him in at some point. Um. Calvin Tantman would be a, a pretty good one. He only wants 190 per show because originally I didn't, I didn't call, I didn't bring him in because of the fact that he wanted so much money. He wants a higher merchandise. There we go. We'll go 20. Right, so that's that. Um, uh, let's have a look. Dan Severin, audio. Dan the Dad. How much does Dan Housen want? Uh, too much. Freddie Yeh didn't impress me, so we're not going to bring him in. Jake Crust, he's a pretty good worker. Oh, okay, so he's he's, he's going out with um, Nevia in real life. So that'll make her happy as well, which will be good. He wants, hold on, uh, higher cut the merchandise. Okay, they're all greedy buggers. They all want higher merchandise cuts. Uh, Joe London, no. Uh, Jake something? No, he wants too much money. Not worth it, I don't think. Jason Hodge. Never heard of him. Any good. I know he's wrestling for TNA. Um, 92 reputation. What's he like in the ring? He's, he's okay. Nothing amazing, though. Fundamental and physical is pretty good, though. We'll leave him for now. He is on our shortlist, so we might bring him in at some point. Joe Alonso, is he pretty good? No, he's bang average. See, what I want to do is create my own stars like Frontman Jack, because he's been amazing. I want more guys like him, ideally. We want them. Um, no. Mark Stern, no. Um... Michael Von Payton, no. Mike Bennett would be a good one. But he wants, to, he's with AEW at the moment anyway. Um, Mustafa Ali would be a really good son. I can't believe he's 39. He's nearly the same age as me. He, he only looks about 25. Myron Reed would be pretty good, but again, he wants too much money. Um, right, Ricky Shane Page. I think he's pretty good, isn't he? He's got good. He's got decent hardcore. I think he'd be good in a, a little stable with. He'd be good in that stable I've got with Ivan Starr. He, he looks like the type of person. Right. 
that. Okay, so we'll just do that. Right, so Ricky Shane Page should be coming in. Robert Anthony, no. Ruffo the Clown. <laughs> Is he any good, Ruffo the Clown? I kind of want to hire him just because I think he looks hilarious in that photo. Uh, experience 100, reputation 100. I'm going to bring him in for the lols. Put him in a match, see how he gets on. You never know, we might, dis we might discover a new front man, Jeff. Right, not many more left. Shane Mercer's pretty good, and he only wants 80 show. Okay, yeah, he's pretty good. We're going to get Shane Mercer in. I, I was actually, what am I doing here? Uh, there we go. I've watched him a couple of times. I watched him when we had COVID. I was watching a lot more independent wrestling, and he was quite good. So he'd be a good one to get as well. Shane Taylor. Can we bring him in on a written contract? Uh, he's only on a per appearance. I don't know what he wants. Should we try 30? Oh my god, he wants a lot of merchandise. Should we go we'll leave we'll go back to 20 and then what we'll do is offer him 300, see if that works. Yeah, there we go. Because I think I think we'll make more money off him for merchandise, so I think it'll, it'll be fine. Silas Young would be pretty good, but I think I don't I think from what I remember, he, we couldn't get him last time. Oh, no. I apologise. We're building a nice little roster here, aren't we? Um, do, 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 do. Is he any good? Tristan Ty. Tristan Ty, I think his name is. Should we bring him in and see how he gets on? We'll bring him in. I like me a hidden gem. You never know. Violent J, no. Warhorse. I remember him being like the flavour of the month very briefly, if I remember. Should we bring him in? We'll bring him in as well, see if he's any good. What I'll do is I'll put the some of the newbies, I'll put them in like a multi man match. We'll see how they get on. Now, he used to be in Shikara and he had a gimmick. So I'm going to sign him and hopefully we can change it to his gimmick. Because if, he, if he's got a mask gimmick, then that will be decent merchandise for us. And I think that's it. Right then, what I'm going to do is I'll forward a couple of days and then, no, I'll forward to the next show, sorry. And I'll be back in a second with the, we'll, we'll have a progress report. I'll see it. I'll show you how I'm getting on with the, the wrestlers coming in. Right, we're back. Um, let's do the booking team stuff first. So let's alter the booking team. We've got up to four people here now. So we can add Alison Danger. We've already got Atisius Koga there. We can add Michael Blanston. And also we could add Weber Hatfield. So who was the other one I went for? I went for... Oh, no, that was it. It was Alison Danger, wasn't it? So that's um, a pretty good booking team. Actually, who have we got in our booking team now? One, two, three... Oh, we've got five. We can't do five because I remember watching Curb Stomp City and he said that you, could, you get pin lies if you have more than five. So we'll get rid of uh, Weber Hatfield for now. He's not got very good booking skills. So there we go, four. So we've got Cliff um, Cliff Compton, who has, um, it doesn't say, Atisius Koga, who's got 48, Alison Danger, 77, and Michael Blanson with a 63. So I'm hoping they all gel well. Um, you have 240 points stored for creative energy, so I'm going to start using that, I think. And according to our current team, you expect to be generating approximately 166 creative uh, CE per meeting, which is really good. Actually, there we go. We can spend it already. So if we go, if we go storyline idea first. So if we do that, um, storyline ideas. This can only be applied to storylines with where Lee Johnson has a major role. We've already got Lee Johnson in the storyline though, so we'll just that, and then we'll do character idea. So we've got character idea. There's no restriction on this idea. Likely to succeed. So we'll just quickly do what we'll do. We'll find somebody. Ah, do you know what? Uh, I want to do it with frontman Jab, but I'm worried it'll it'll backfire on us. I'm going to do it on Heather Reckless. Just because I feel like it doesn't matter what we do. I think she'll be fine. Is it creative idea? Yeah. Right, so... Yeah, there we go. Success. So she's now got very hot momentum. 
which is really good so that's that and then let's just quickly look let's see what else we can do spend creative energy um should we go creative finish we'll go creative finish right so there's no restrictions on this one either so what i might do is use that in the main event we'll leave it for now and then what i want to do is look at the commentary team let's just see who else we can add we can add Alison Danger now, which boosts it a little bit. Um, and then we've also got, let's have a look who we've got as our road agents now. And uh, roll, there we go, road agent. So we can get rid of Cliff Compton as a road agent now, because we've got quite a few. But we'll get rid of him, because he's not very good at road agent in any way. So we'll leave that for now. We've got some other ones here as well we'll see how they get on and then what we're going to do so if we have a look at my roster now reset it i haven't bothered bringing in any women's wrestlers but i might do that for the next show i think the women's division is pretty decent at the moment so i don't want to over populate that too much wrestler right there we go so wrestler male so let's just go through some of the obviously the ones calvin tankman i've brought in um who else du, 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 jake chris du, 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 du. who else who else who else rhino obviously i mentioned him i think before ruffo the clown i'm going to give him a match in the pre i'm going to give him a pre-show match and see how he gets on shane mercer shane taylor which is a really good addition silas young tristan ty warhorst and then weather hatfield now weather hatfield does have a gimmick think is it this one do I think there we go so he's boomer Hatfield and then I need to do the photo I'm hoping there's a photo here search boom now oh, there we go there we go so we'll give him the mask does it say mask on here mask does, does not have a mask oh okay we'll just create one there we go so we can have him in the mix as well right so now what we're going to do is look at the creative side of things let's see so they reckon rhino's our main star now paul frontman jazz all the way down the bottom um colt cabana's number two gringo loco is number three and then uh nevia is number three four sorry no next big things just yet hot prospects is still bastard cassidy and golden dragon let's have a look at talk the talk so frontman jazz still the main man on the mic um, is there any addition? Rhino's all right on the mic as well. Silas Young. Sil um, Showstoppers is basically looks the same. Ring Generals, not too bothered about that. But Rhino's in there. Who's hot at the moment? So Heather Reckless, Frontman Jar, Mad Dog Connolly, Lord Crew, and Gringo Loco. Who's not? Mickey Knuckles, Joshua Bishop, Tootie Lynn, Nevia, Nevia, who's our women's champion, which is not good. Hidden Gems. Let's see if they recommend anybody. So we've got Babatunde, but he's not from here. He's not from Great Lakes, so we won't be hiring him. Willie Mack, he's from Great Lakes. No, he's not. He's from Southwest, so we won't be hiring him either. S uh, Slice Boogie, Southwest again. I only really want to sign people from the Great Lakes area, so it's annoying. Here you go. He's from Great Lakes area. Right, we'll look to bring him in. You never know. We might have another frontman jar in the making here. I don't think he's very good on the mic, though. Let's have a look. Uh, acting was okay, microphone was terrible. Yeah, so he's not he's not gonna be on the mic. He doesn't look like somebody that's on the mic. He looks like a like a like a bruiser. Right then, I'm ready to start the next show. Actually let's have a quick look at the finances. So annoyingly I had I have a warning for um, the production department, so I've had to i I'm having to slowly upgrade the production side of things. But I can't do anything else because it's going to cost too much. And I don't want to be um, financially broke every month. I don't want to make that much of a loss each month. We're already, we're already making like $600 a loss per show. It's going to be more than that now because I've had to upgrade it slightly in the production. But we'll see how we get on. I don't want to upgrade the merchandise just yet either because that, again, is a cost that we can't afford. But we've got uh, just over $10,000 in the bank. We made 1,127 last month. Let's just have a look at finances. So last month we made 9,000 from, uh, we, well, we, we basically 
we had 9,166 at the start of the month. We got 1,127 from the performance side of things. Ticket sales 755. Sponsors was pretty good 2,500. 397 for uh, merchandise. And then we basically um, took that over. And then this month we've made a bit so far, but we'll check that later. But yeah, right then, let's get cracking with the next show. I'm hoping this is better than the last one. Frontman Jar is definitely going to get some promo time. We'll stick with this one. Actually, no, we, we managed to get, I think we managed to get 250 last show, didn't we? So let's have a look at updating this. Let's go 200 and then go max 250. Right, so, oh, we can, oh, that capacity, oh, there we go. We'll go slightly up. We'll go the um, Walker, Walker, Walkesher country. Sorry, Walkesha, Kansas, okay, I can't even get my words out of here. Walk, Wukesha County Expo Center. There you go. I have to break it in little bits. Right, boardroom meeting. So we've already done that, so we don't, we won't leave it. We'll leave it as that for now. Locker room instance. So Adam Revolver's turned up, requested to be allowed to hang out backstage. He's an unemployed worker who happens to be living nearby. He's not worked for SCW before. So he's a mercenary. Mm. We don't like them. Mm. No, do you know what? I'll bring him. Right, training, training. Frontman Jaya came to you backstage with an idea for enhancing his character. Okay, that's good. Um, Davy Bang helped create a fun and relaxed atmosphere backstage after finding a discarded karaoke machine. Ah, it's not good. Right. So Atisius Koga almost got into a fight with Warhorse, causing the damage to his rental car. So what we're going to do is just. It's Find him. And then address the locker room. Can't do anything there, so that's fine. Right. So um, I'll be back in a sec with the this show. Right, we're back with the next show. So we start the show with Rhino and Frontman Ja having a promo war. It got 50 for the segment, um, which is disappointing considering Frontman Ja got 78 last one. Maybe Rhino dragged him down a bit. We'll have a look in a sec. Um, Rhino clearly enjoyed having the freedom being off script. Did get the crowd hotter. Let's have a look at the road agent. No road agent. Booking details. No. Right, let's have a look at the dirt sheet. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It just, just didn't seem to... Maybe he's just better. Frontman Ja's better putting a promo on his own. We'll just bear that in mind for next show. And then the first match of the night is a tag team match which had Rhino and Calvin Tankman defeating Frontman Jack and Colt Cabana to start the feud properly between Frontman Jack and Rhino. The second got 45, 28 for the uh, crowd, 40 for the wrestling. Um, Calvin Tankman was the better worker out of the four with a 49. So that's really good. Frontman Jack was really off his game. Let's have a look at the dirt sheet. See if there's anything here that's worth noticing. So there's a lot of bonuses. So there we go. Penalised. Cole Cabana was penalised for physical condition. Penalised for holding back. Penalised for inconsistency and declining physical ability. Same with Rhino, basically. Oh, well. Right. Um, maybe next time I do this match, I should just go like all, click on the all-out match so it, they up their game a bit. I think that's what will get rid of them being off their game, I think. I don't know. Right, and then we did um, a post-match beatdown from on Rhino from Rhino on Frontman Ja. So this, this storyline is starting hot, which is good. Um, and then we did the debut of Shane Mercer and Warhorse. Shane Mercer defeated Warhorse by submission. Got 48 for the segment, 30 for the crowd, 48 for the wrestling, which is pretty good for us. And then both workers uh, wrestled quite well. And they have pretty good chemistry as well, which is good to see. Ricky Shane Page is not a good road agent we need to get rid of him as a road agent after this show and then we did a four-way match um to keep the storyline with lee johnson and jimmy Le jimmy yang going and um gringo loco defeated lee johnson jimmy yang and jake chris when he pinned jimmy yang with the frog splash got us 51 for the second one 29 for the crowd 46 for the wrestling um Gringo Loco, as always, was the standout performer out of the four. 
The storyline continues as well, which is great. And then obviously Gringo Loco benefit from having a hot new move. Um, we did a pre-match beatdown um, from Heather Reckless, who beat down uh, Nevia. Got a 27 for the segment, keeps the storyline going. And then Heather Reckless defeated Nevia with the car crusher um, for the women's title. So that's good. So the segment was got 43, crowd um, 26, wrestling was 40. Navia was slightly better in the ring, but Heather Reckless wasn't too bad either. And then obviously Reed Bentley needs to... We need to get rid of Reed Bentley and... Um, who was the other one? I'll remember when I look at the screen. But anyway. Right, so that was the main event. I see how it did. Uh, so the show appeared worse because of the broadcast quality level is slightly worse than at least one rival. Your show appeared worse because a live event experience level is worse than at least one rival's. Your show appeared worse because our production values are slightly worse than at least one rival. So that's not good on that side of things. We did get a 43 for the overall rating. And we managed to get 179 people in, which I think is the biggest crowd we've done. So the crowds are getting better. We have increased the popularity. Once the money comes in, we can try and upgrade it a little bit. But at the moment, we're not doing very well financially. Um, the best segment of the night was the Rhino attacking Ja post-match. Right, so we'll just go Rhino. And then we'll go Colt Banner, I think, as well. We'll just do that. Financial report. Oh, balls, I clicked on it too too quickly. There we go. Right, so we've increased our popularity to 18. So we're literally, in, after each show, we're improving our popularity by one point. So I think we'll get to small size in the next 12 months. Um, but, yeah, I'm annoyed. I, I, I get so annoyed with my mouse pad. It doesn't seem to do anything anything on any other games that I play on, but this one it just seems to be very sensitive on this particular on this particular game. Anyway, we are we we have um, eight thousand nine hundred four. Obviously, I can't go back to figure out how I did on the last show, which is annoying. But let's just have a look at the finances anyway. So we were two hundred twelve pounds down. So we we're, we're now. Oh yeah, I know why, because we, we we booked a lot of wrestlers for that show. So next show we need to book less wrestlers, I think, to be honest. We always want to be making sure we're making money each show. Ticket sales was was better than before. Um, sponsors was not as good as before, but I think that will improve as the month goes on. And then merchandise was about the same. It's just the workers that cost us. Obviously the show costs are up now as well. Uh, marketing is up slightly. But yeah. These things are what happen as you get more popular, the costs get more as well. So, right then, I'll be back in a minute with the next show. Right, I'm back for the next show. Um, our finances are slightly up, 11,665. So we'll just have a quick look at the finances. So performance, 2,201. Sponsors, 2,535. Merchandise, 216 at the moment. So that's pretty good. Hopefully, um, what we need to do is book less wrestlers for this show coming up. So we're going to keep it very simple and uh, see how we get on. So there's going to be three matches. Um, we, we will have a tag team match, actually, because we will have the tag title on the line. Um, we're going to go with this one again. Uh, yep. Let's see how we get on. Boardroom meeting. Right. So all your bonuses and penalties were applied. The, the meeting generated a total of 114 creative. Oh, I forgot to use that creative finish from the last show. Right. Um, oh, and I haven't done frontman jazz. Right, I don't, let me just sort this out first. Right, came to you backstage in IT for a creative finish. Okay. Training, training, done. Right, before I do anything else, I need to go back here. I need to uh, get out of that. Right, Frontman Ja. Because the last show, Frontman Ja, we could attach it. Ah, uh, we can't do it, so we must. it must have expired. Okay, right. Crack on. 
Right then, um, I'll be back in a sec with the show. Right, we're back. Um, we basically did um, a pre-show match because I forgot to do it in the last show just to see how Ruffo the Clown is. Um, Ruffo the Clown defeated Boomer Hatfield by submission. Um, segment was got a 33, crowd only 12. Uh, wrestling rating was 33 as well. Um, both were okay workers. And then they, uh, Boomer Hatfield and Ruffo the Clown have great chemistry in showing the performances, but then it says Boomer Hatfield was rusty as well. So maybe we'll book them again in a few months, or maybe I'll end up tag, maybe I'll put them in a tag team, see if they've got chemistry as a tag team. You never know. Right, so that's the pre show match done. And we did, um, to open the show properly, we did have a reckless defeat in Mickey Knuckles by submission with the calf crusher. Um, 34 for the segment, 24 for the crowd, 38 for the wrestling. Uh, Mickey Knuckles was slightly better. We did this, I did put it down as a hardcore match to use uh, Mickey Knuckles' strengths and also make have a Reckless look a bit more um, of a threatening wrestler as well by the fact that she beat Mickey Knuckles in a hardcore style match. And then afterwards... Um, have a reckless and ne uh, Nevia cut promos on each other. So Nevia come out after the match, and then her and Have a Reckless went back and forth. Second got thirty six. Um, in a uh, match with good heat and decent wrestling, Lee Johnson defeated Shane Taylor in fifteen minutes by pinfall with the one shot. Um, we went with the storytelling match aim. Segment got thirty. Uh, sorry, segment got forty one. Crowd was okay into it 29 wrestling was got 39 lee johnson was the better wrestler out of the two um shane taylor was unfortunately off his game uh, rip bison we need to get rid of as a road agent i did remember to get rid of ricky shane j ricky shane page and uh reed bentley or whatever his name is as a road agent so we need to get rid of um rip bison as well i think shane taylor might make a good road agent so we'll see Right, so after the match, Jimmy Yang attacked Lee Johnson to keep their storyline going. The um, the semi-main event pitted Calvin Tankman against Gringo Loco. Calvin Tankman, I can't get the words out again. Calvin Tankman defeated Gringo Loco in 18 minutes with the Tankman driver. The segment got a 60, which is really good. Crowd was kind of into it with the 36. Wrestling got a 55. Uh, Gringo Loco with a 60 a game. So this was a pretty good match, I reckon. And then the we managed to do an 8-minute promo with Frontman Ja. Got a 73 rating, which is, which is really going to boost the overall rating. Um, and then basically in, a, in the main event, we had Frontman Ja defeating Silas Young. The match was designed so the wrestlers could go out there and steal the show. Frontman, oh, sorry, the second got a 33, 26 for the uh, crowd, 31 for the wrestling. So it didn't exactly wow the crowd by the looks of it. 35 in ring performance from Frontman Ja, 27 for Silas Young. Um, Frontman Ja was really off his game and Silas Young was rusty. So that's not good. Obviously, we've got the usual warnings for the. Um, broadcasting and production side of things. We have increased the popularity in one region. We got an overall rating of 42. And we did manage to get 194 people in, so that's really good. The best segment of the night was the Frontman Ja promo. The best um, match of the night was probably Lee. No, it wasn't. It was Calvin Tankman defeating Gringo Loco. That should have really, in theory, should have been the, the real main event. Maybe I should have left. Originally, um, I was going to have that as the main event just to keep the crowd happy, but I thought I'd have. To, I thought ideally we should have the champion defend this title in the main event. Um, unfortunately, I got a thirty-three. So, but we'll see. Like I said, Frontman Jar is very good on the mic. He's just not very good in the ring. We need to probably put him in there with better wrestlers. So we'll just go Gringo Loco, Calvin Tantman. There we go. Ah, that was good. We didn't accidentally double double click on that then. So we managed to get 1,164 from ticket sales, merchandise 194, workers cost us about 
uh, cost us 2000 show cost 577 100 for marketing so we made an overall loss of 1345 which is a bit annoying really but um, I'm hoping each month it kind of counteracts. If we break even each month or we make a slight bit of profit, I'm happy with that for now. And then we've increased our popularity again. Get in. Right, so we're now 19. Right, I'm going to see. I, I know I, we probably won't be able to get a TV deal, but I'm going to just have a quick look. Um, and then I'm probably going to call it a day because this this episode has gone on for quite a bit now. And I, if you're enjoying it, let me know, and I'll go. I'll do a longer show next episode. Uh, Atticius Koga and Alice Crawley are splitting up. Do I keep Atticius Crawley? I don't. I think he's a bit of a bad influence in. Well, no, I'll leave it for now. I'll figure it out offline. Right. So that's that done. Um, and I think that's it really I don't think there's anything let's have a look at creative see if there's anything changed on there right Calvin tapman has gone to number 2 now Gringo Loco is number 3 so maybe maybe frontman Jazz shouldn't be the champion but he can be like um, a prominent person on there Shane Taylor's 5th on there now uh, nothing for next big things Hot Prospects we've got Eli Eisen now he's only 29 uh, still got Frontman Jar as the main talker. Showstoppers is still Gringo Loco. I think maybe Gringo Loco should be the champion and maybe Calvin Tankman should eventually get the title down the road. I don't know. I think I'm going to keep it with Frontman Jar for a bit because I don't really want a hot potato of the world heavyweight title. Um, Ring Generals, who's hot? Let's have a look. So Heather Reckless is still hot on there and then we've got Frontman Jar as number two. So that's good. Mad Dog Connolly. So I think next show we need to put the tag champions in a match, if I remember. Hidden Gems, let's just have a quick look on this. No, it's still the same. Kit Osborne, actually. He's, we, haven't, we haven't checked him out. Is he from Great Lakes? No, he's from Tri-State. Right then, I'm going to call it a day. Thank you, as always, for watching. Leave me some comments. Give me some feedback. Any advice on doing this save is always appreciated because I'm not like a massive expert on it like others so let me know if there's anything on this episode and you think you can help me and uh, enjoy the rest of your week and i'll be back next monday all the best bye